Okay, <clears throat> this is um, a capture on post-operative issues. So you learned last semester about uh, pre-op, a little bit about intra-op, and now we're doing post-op issues. So, um, someone goes to surgery, general surgery, and the next place a patient is taken is PACU, post-anesthesia care unit. Um, when the patient leaves um, operating suite, the report is given to the nurse that will be taking care of the uh, patient. Reports given by the nurse anesthetist. If it was the actual anesthesiologist um, slash MD, then he would be given the report. So things that will be given to the uh, nurse for report is what kind of surgery took place, um, how long surgery lasted, the last time pain meds were given to the patient, um, also the anesthesia end time. <clears throat> anesthesia end time is actual time that the last anesthesia dose was given. This is important now because when the patient goes to the floor, um, if they're admitted, if it's not an outpatient procedure, um, the doctors want to know the anesthesia end time because now there are protocols that the patient has to uh, sit at the bedside or get in a chair or stand up um, six hours post anesthesia end time or eight hours. So they're using that time. Um, to get the patient moving, ambulation, things like that. Also reported to the nurse will be um, blood loss. What kind of blood loss, how much, how many mLs. Another thing that's important, uh, drains. Uh, what kind of drains, how many <clears throat> there are. Um, also, if it's, for example, a laparoscopic procedure, how many lap sites there are. There are seven lap sites, six lap sites. So these all have to be assessed and looked at, looked at <clears throat> by the nurse when she does her assessment. What else can you think that should be given in report? What other kind of things should be given? Think about that. Okay, so. The RN gets report that it's the RN's responsibility to monitor and check and assess airway, breathing, circulation. Um, that's very important. Those are usually the three things that are going to comprise complications um, in the PACU unit. Vital signs, um, usually they're on an ECG monitoring. That's taking place. Um, they're going to explain to the patient what's happening through the process. Um, realize that everybody wakes up at different times depending on their comorbidities, depending on their age, depending on what kind of surgery they had. Um, if patients are very obese, then the anesthesia is lipophilic, L-I-P-O-P-H-I-L-I-C, um, I believe lipophilic, which means the anesthesia likes to live in your adipose tissue. Remember the last sense to leave when you go under anesthesia and first to come back is your hearing. So a patient may not be able to open their eyes, but they can hear what's going on. Uh, so it's important for the nurse to be explaining to the patient what's happening, um, what's going to be taking place, things of that nature. So talking about the vital signs and the airway breathing circulation, uh, remember there's a lot of baseline um, information received and taken before the patient goes to surgery. So they've got a baseline of vital signs. Uh, they've got the baseline of an EKG from a previous um, EKG that might have been done. So they know what the normal is for the patient. So they now know post um, OR whether um, they're within normal range, they're way too high, or they're way too low. So common post-operative complications. Probably the number one is airway obstruction. Airway obstruction, basically the number one cause is if a patient's lying supine, the tongue falls back, 
and sits right there in the throat causing obstruction of air. Um, so if a patient is not awake, they should be lying in a sideline position as they start to wake up, uh, put them on uh, their back, supine, they can start to raise the head of the bed. Um, so that's usually the way these patients go from sideline to uh, low fallors and high fallors. The next complication is hypoxemia. Um, hypoxemia means you're just not ventilating enough, you're not getting enough oxygen, or you're not breathing deep enough, um, so your SATs are going to be lower. So causes for this could just be general anesthesia. People just aren't waking up and it's taking a while so they're not breathing deep enough. Um, that could be a big issue. Could be the patient is a long time smoker. Uh, they don't have the best ventilation in their lungs or they have sleep apnea. Maybe they're obese. So you put a little sedation on the patient and they've already got sleep apnea and that's going to be exacerbated. Uh, Obese patients as well, that might be a trigger. Um, hypoventilation. Hypoventilation is also the other issue. Um, so patients basically, because of the general anesthesia, they're not breathing deep enough. Um, same kind of thing, anesthesia, lung diseases, maybe they have COPD, uh, maybe they've got scar tissue in their lungs, they don't have as many alveoli to um, expand, um, high risk of atelectasis, uh, meaning they're not, um, they're collapsed, they're not expanding, could be a lot of mucus in their lungs, um, could be a mucus plug in there, uh, maybe it hurts to breathe, maybe the patient doesn't want to breathe deeply, so um, that could be the hypoventilation. Um, could be smoking. So some of these things are all um, contributing to patient not being able to hypoventilate well enough. Cardiovascular problems that usually arise postoperatively. Um, number one is hypotension. Um, patient just had anesthesia and pain meds. Both of these can reduce your blood pressure, cause hypotension. Blood loss, did the patient lose a lot of blood? Um, during surgery. Um, so what's their baseline? Is their baseline lower? Um, are they right where they need to be? This is where the baseline is important to know what's normal for this patient. They're asleep. They're not going to be, a be able to tell you what their baseline is. So um, that's what you look on the pre-op um, vital signs. Neuro and psych, a big neuro and psych issue, not very common, but something called emergence delirium. Del delirium, sorry, emergence delirium. So patients come out of anesthesia and they're very agitated, they thrash about, they yell, they may hit. These people are really wild, and this is a form of delirium coming out of anesthesia. Um, could be caused by patient being very upset before going into surgery. Um, whatever, your, whatever your emotional state is before going into surgery, it's going to be the same thing when you come out. It's just like you were put to sleep, but you're not sleeping really, and it's the same one that comes back. Or it could be caused by the anesthesia. Elderly patients are prone to this, so coming out they may be more agitated, they're going to be confused, they don't know where they're at. The first thing you ought to check if someone's very confused and agitated is the oxygenation. Their ventilation could be low. Also could be some kind of stress. Um, is their bladder full? Do they have a full bladder? Is that bothering them? Um, could be psych issues. Patients um, have surgery that have behavioral health issues. Um, pain meds. Pain meds should have been given in um, the OR, they'll, you'll know the last dose and what it was. Um, so when the patient starts to wake up, um, what's the half-life? How long is that pain med going to last? Um, maybe they're going to be in pain when they start to wake up or while they're in PACU. So um, you should be on top of this if the patient needs any pain meds.